What's up, DC Nation? Welcome back to another video. And guys, like the video, give a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Sally is great DC Comics content every day that you don't want to miss. And guys, I just did like my Batman number 90 and my Just League number 42 review. So go check out those. But this one was the biggest one of the day, right? Flash number 750. Guys, it's crazy when we got into so many numbers. Like, we've been watching The Flash, well, watching, reading The Flash for so long. Like, I've read the Jay Garrick ones. I've read, like, from Silver Age, Flash. I've read the New 52, which I actually really like those up until the end of it. And the Rebirth, uh, those issues have been really great, guys. We've actually had 88 issues, and this would be technically the 89th issue of this whole Flash Rebirth thing. And it's been written by Josh Williams the whole entire time. And guys, I think he's been doing a good job. I know a lot of people say, oh, they don't like how he writes, like it's sometimes too convoluted, or there's too much stuff going on, but I like the way he's done with the whole Flash War, with, with Reverse Flash, we've had like um, Zoom come involved, like Hunter Solomon, with the whole Force Quest, and now we're finally getting to the really good stuff with Paradox and stuff. So I really like that. But the first storyline in this is obviously the Flash Age Part 1. Now guys, we see Papa Sandoval, he's actually drawing the comic for this first part, and his art's amazing, guys. Like, it looks really good. And right at the start, you see this guy who's going to rob a bank, right? And he sees Heatwave going to rob it, and Flash takes down Heatwave and actually pretty much turns this guy's life around. This other guy is about to rob the bank. And he's telling this story to his wife and saying how Flash saved him, he wished he got thanks, Flash. And I really like this as like an intro. Because yes, it's very simple, you say, oh, Flash has saved a lot of people. But, it's a great intro into the comic of this 80-page giant, and it really, like, shows, like, wow, the Flash has actually got a lot, he actually knows how people think. Yes, he has his own problems, but he also saves people, too. Now, we also see that Barry and Iris are back together, they're actually doing very well, which I like that, because we have this whole thing, this whole series, they've gone through a lot of struggles, like, when she found out his identity, with the whole Wally thing, so it's good to actually see them in a really good relationship, finally. Like, it took freaking 89 issues, but we're finally here. And they actually have, like, a good scene, where we see, like, them talking about, like, Commander Cold and how he died. Commander Cold dying in, like, the whole Rogue's, um, Rain, um, storyline was actually pretty crazy. Like, it was a big shocker. And they actually paid tribute to him in this, like, comic. And you see, like, Flash, you see, like, a recap of... Kinda like the whole series, well, like everything since Flash War. I'm talking about like the Force Quest, about Kid Flash, about Avery, the other Flash, and just about the Flash family in general, and about this whole thing paradox and how the future Flash warned him. So, this has been really interesting stuff, but there is a lot of recap in those first few pages. But once we get to like Barry, he's investigating about the Rainbow Raider with like um, Director Singh, which we haven't seen him investigate in a while. He, the, Barry even says this himself in the comic. He's like, I've been being the Flash for a while, I, ha I actually haven't been investigating at, at all as a detective. So it's good to see him investigating again. So we see him actually take down the Rainbow Raider, and it's a nice scene with him and Iris, and then we see all, like, Iris does, like, a journal about how the Flash is great. We see an awesome image of Flash running through the city with all these people talking about how he saved them, which, through this part, I was like, okay, this is nice, but I want to see more of Paradox, Godspeed, I want to see the good shit. So, finally, Godspeed shows up, and he's like, hey, Barry, I'll help you out with um, um, Paradox, but I'm not going to be, like, helping you out too much, because this, this guy's actually really evil. And Barry's like, oh, I can help you out, and Barry runs blindly into a trap. Like, guys, they show up, we see Paradox, he, like, narrates how, like, Flash has gone through crisis, how he started, and how he always moves forward, but doesn't look back at his, like, pretty much his mistakes, and that's pretty much what Paradox's origin was last issue. You guys, you check out my thoughts about that in the eye top right corner right here, but we see that, and it's actually pretty interesting, and we finally see like a big shot of Paradox, and he looks awesome, guys. Like, we saw like a shot of him last issue, but the shot of him in this issue looks legit. And guys, the issue pretty much ends, like this first part of the 8-page giant ends with like Flash and Godspeed running at each other, about to fight. Which, this gets me really intrigued for the next issue, but in this storyline, it's not as big. Like, all, all that happened was Flash ran into a trap and he's gonna fight Godspeed. That's it. Everything else was pretty much, oh, recap of everything that's happened, and Flash being like, everybody's saying he's a great hero, and he saved people, and he's back to get with Iris. But still, this is a good start to the comic. I did like it, and I'm excited for this whole Flash Cage thing. 
But guys, going to the second um, storyline of like the six um, storylines in this issue, there's a lot of them, is pretty much uh, Todd Collins, I think it's Todd Collins, right? Yeah, Jeff Johns and Todd Collins, and they, it's pretty much a story about Captain Cold, and he actually goes to this place to actually pay for a beer, but this robber pretty much comes there, he's about to rob, Captain Cold's like, dude, don't be doing this, and eventually the police shows up and blames on Captain Cold, and Wally's actually in this. Like, you see Wally with Linda. I'm like, oh, okay. So they're back together. So I thought that was pretty interesting, the storyline. Wally's talking about, wow, uh, tomorrow's going to be my anniversary at the Flash, and Captain Cold should try to ruin it. But turns out Captain Cold isn't. He was actually just trying to get a beer. That's it. So it's a very simple story just to show, like, the villains aren't always doing like, bad stuff. They're actually trying to live their own life, too, and get better. So I like it. But it's not the greatest story. It's pretty simple. The art's solid, and I would only read through it once. But still, a solid story. Now, the next one we get to is the Francis Maya Paul one, and another like it's like an unknown writer. Like I don't really know him as much. He's maybe like written like a bunch of other stuff. His like first name's Brian. Like I don't remember him that much because I haven't really heard of him compared to like Jeff Johns, Joshua Williams. Um, um, Marv Wolfman in the next story, but still, it's well written with like Flash. He goes to like he's talking to Irish, right? And he goes to like these different like timelines and sees the real Grodd's the Flash. So I really like that. That was cool. We see Iris is the Flash and Barry's actually with Patty. And Flash actually finally recognizes I was supposed to be the Flash. Like anybody can be the Flash, but he plays it well and he's doing a good job at it. And it's a nice scene and all, but the thing that carries this story is Francis Manpaul's art. Like guys, his art is amazing, especially that double page spread where it says like DC Comics proudly presents The Flash. And guys, we have seen like a double page spread of like that since like New 52. And I love those back then. So seeing this um, issue is really awesome. It's actually pretty cool. But guys, the art's really good. Real Grodd looks great. Uh, Iris as The Flash looks great. And it just really hits home. But guys, that was a great storyline, it was my favorite up to the point in the issue. And then we get to the weakest, I think, in the issue, which is Mark Wolfman and uh, Riley Rosimo's story with like Mirror Master and The Flash. I think it's like The Flash of Main Worlds or something like that. And you see him fight out the Mirror, uh, Mirror Master, like the original Mirror Master, and he turns into a bunch of different reflections, eventually beats him and puts Mirror Master in prison. That's it. And guys, I just don't really like the art. Like, Ryan Ro Riley Rosimo's art has never been my favorite at all. Like, it's been okay, but it's usually, like, super weird. Like, it, it worked in the Batman Shadow comic. That was a great comic. But here, I just don't feel like it really worked. And some of the pages just looks weird. And the storyline itself, like, coming from Marv Wolfman, yeah, it's not that great. Like, I know it's trying to make, like, a throwback to, like, the Silver Age and stuff. But that's fine and all, but I still want a little more interesting storyline. So, it's not a bad um, story in the comic, but it's definitely the weakest. Like, all these other ones are like, probably like a 7 and higher. Where this one, I'd probably give like a 6. Right after that, it comes my favorite story in the entire comic. It's the one with Jake Garrick. You see Jake Garrick go against the Thinker. It's like a throwback to the Golden Age. And you actually see like a voice speaking in his ear. And I don't know if that was Wally. Like, I think it was Wally, or it could be Impulse. But at the end of the story, you see him rushing through. You see, like, stories of, like, the flash behind him. And it says, Coming in 2020. I'm like, that got me hyped. That That's really cool. Like, Jake Eric has always been one of my favorite flashes. And since, like, the button, we haven't seen him at all. Like, the whole, like, crossover between Batman and Flash, he shows up and then he's gone. So I'm like, alright, Josh, well, let's wait here and have him show up. And finally, he's coming back. Yeah, I'm excited to see him come back, guys. It's gonna be legit. And I'm excited to see him, Wally, and Barry work together. Like, that's gonna be really cool to see that happen. And just having the thinker in this, and you see, like, all of um, Jake Harris' villains, like Pipe Piper, The Rival, um, The Thinker, and different villains from the Golden Age in the background of him, just looks, it's really cool. And I give this story, like, probably, like, the 9.5. Like, it's by far the best. Like, the last one with, like, uh, Mark Wolfman, the Mirror Master and Flash story, that was, like, weakest by far, where this one is, like, the best by far. So, it's really very, it's, like, variety, you know? Like, some, some of these stories people will love, some of them will just think are okay, but I don't think none of these stories you guys will hate at all. But, guys, after this one, we come to the final one, and that's, it's okay. Like, it's pretty much, like, setting up Generation Zero and the whole 5G thing with Wally. It's a flash-forward epilogue, 
we see Wally, he's in like the um, Moby's chair, he's all powerful, and he goes through all these crises, recaps DC's history, and how convulsed it is about, oh, this new 52, there's Rebirth, there's Golden Age, and he's like, oh, it's now being broken down, and we see this other character, the Tempest, who's been showing up recently, and he's like, oh, Wally, I think the multiverse is fine, or the metaverse, and Wally's like, no, it's not, it's broken. And Tempest is like, what are you going to do about it? And Wally's like, I'm the fastest man alive. I'm all powerful as a god now. Alright, I'm ready to do this. I'm going to save the multiverse or the metaverse, pretty much. That's pretty much what he says. And I'm like, alright, like, the art's good in there. It's cool to see, like, all the crises, like, um, the crisis on Infinite Earth, the final crisis, different crises on one page, zero hour. That was cool to see on the page and stuff. But, at the same time, it took up space, and I feel like it could have just been like a two or three page epilogue. But it's literally 12 pages, and it's just pretty much a recap of DC's history, and then Wally's saying, alright, I'm gonna go save it, and it's like an advertisement for Generation Zero. Which, I have mixed thoughts on it. Like guys, there's been a lot of things about 5G, which you can hear my full thoughts on it, my eye top pro corner right here, but, I don't know if it's a great idea, but I don't like them like, pretty much put an advertisement in the in this comic. And guys, Wally, I like Wally, I like what they're doing. It's cool, he's powerful, he got Linda in them back. But this storyline with like um, Scott Lomdell, like it's it's one of the weaker ones in the comic. Like it's still saw it. I give like a seven. But it's not nowhere near like Jake Eric's or the Flash Age one. So eh, I would kind of do without it. So it's more like alright, it's an okay story. But yeah, guys, if I'd have to rank all the stories in this issue, I'd put number six is the whole Mirror Master and Flash one, and then number five would be the whole Wally and the whole um, him being like Moby's chair, the one that I just mentioned. Number four would probably be the Captain Cold one, because that's decent, but it's not super great. Um, number two would probably be the Francis Man Paul one with like Flash with all his great art and stuff. Uh, number two would probably be, let's see, the, the Flash Age. That one was great. But, number one, by far, would be the Jake Garrick one, because that was just legit. Like, it's my favorite, and I keep rereading it to see different things, like past villains from Jake Garrick's history. But guys, overall, this is a solid giant. It's a cool, like, um, 750th issue. It's not better than Action Comics number 1000 or Detective Comics number 1000, because those stories, like, those big, um, giants were really awesome, especially Detective Comics. Like, they delivered a lot on that series. But this one is still worth buying. I definitely recommend it. It's really cool. And guys, there's a lot, there's a couple stories in here that are just really awesome. Especially the Jake Eric one. But guys, overall, I'm gonna give this 8 out of 10. Because like I was gonna give it like in the sevens, but I'm gonna give a solid score. It could have been a little better, but I still recommend it because like Joshua Willis has been doing such a great job in the series. And I'm excited to see what he does next with Paradox, Godspeed, Flash, and Jake Eric. But guys, in the comment section below, tell me what you thought about this issue. Did you love it? Did you hate it? And are you excited for what's coming next? But guys, if you like the video, give a big thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, bro, subscribe to my channel. So it's great just house content every day that you don't want to miss. And yeah, guys, that's the video. Peace out.